right mess at my studio. I had planned to do a canvas a while ago. Not only just for the website, but for myself, put it up in my home, having a few things change in my home, and I wanted to get some artwork done for that, to kind of bring the room together. This will be one of those pieces, so, unless someone offers me, you know, some money. The inspiration for this one, because it looks like a mess, but a good mess, you know, like a really, oh, I love it, mess. It was the Neo colour thing that I did. This. I love the expressional, I love the marks and everything. And obviously since then, I've gone to do sort of pieces like this, which is mixed media, which you might have seen in my community. If you didn't see it in my community and you're new here, subscribe. It's free. So, you know, you might as well. This is kind of inspired, but mainly like the marks, you know, like the random kind of marks. I took some photographs, which I will pop in this footage somewhere, I'm sure. I had to jump in because the photos you're about to see are some photos I had taken for like colour reference. So I really loved like the combination of colour when I was out for a walk in the fields. And so I took the photo and cropped them so that I could just concentrate on the colour and that is predominantly where I got the inspiration for this big piece, picking out some of those colours. I didn't really explain it very well, so here's the photos. This chair, see, it's so great. I can kind of go around, collect stuff for you, spin back around, bring it to you. It's like a conveyor belt of, you know, artwork. Anyway, I have four pieces. This is number one of four, so there's three other pieces to do. I'm probably gonna get more canvas. Yeah, I'll have to anyway, because my husband won't let me paint over the horrible stuff downstairs. Oh, honestly. A canvas is prime estate. I think you're well within your rights to if you're not obviously at art school though, if you're at art school, you can't do that because they need to assess your work, blah, blah, blah. So you just see me dance around for about, probably speed this up or clip it. Either way, there's gonna be a couple of minutes where you've just seen me dancing around. What I love to do, and I'm sure that other people are like this, I like to listen to music that reflects emotion I want my work to convey. Does that make sense? So I'm in a really good mood, I'm really happy. I want my living room to be cozy, warm, bring the inside out, and I want my artwork to reflect that. I enjoyed this so much. This is just like, uh, the light is kind of making a really, you know what I'm like with my light, I've yet to learn. I'm yet to learn about sufficient lighting which is ridiculous because I used to curate, so it, you could argue that it's a transferable skill. This is delish. I want you to know that this is all paint. This will be like one of many layers. You know, for those of you who do paint, you'll get it. For those of you who don't and want to paint, it will, you just need to trust the process. And it's true, it really is true. You must, must, must trust the process. You need to resign yourself to the journey, you know? And it needs to be fun. I think that's so important. I have been there, I've been there. Trying to crack the bone that is hyper-realism, you know, hovering over that blank space with the finest of brushes, trying to give skill, because that's what I thought skill amounted to. In light of this though, I think we can all argue that yes, you may think that this is a pile of crap. And as is your right, I'm not offended. No one's offended. However, to think it's a pile of crap and then assume that there's lack of skill is I would call ignorant. And uh, a couple of reasons. When you work in such an expressional manner, you've, especially in color, color is only something that I've really like enjoyed when I started my practice again with you guys, right? Before then I was very much monochrome, very much about, because I was three dimensional in my head. So the idea of 
going towards colour. I felt colour was a distraction because I was really into marks. You have to think about colour that complements my own. Think about tone. Things that jar. Do you want it to jar? Do you not want it to jar? Do you want it to complement one another? Either way needs to be a cohesive visual story on a flat plane. Coupled with marks, as I've said. So when you're thinking about the marks you're making, how does that read? And also on top of those two things, which you think I'm just breezing over, I might add, you've also got to think about composition because regardless of whether you think it's abstract, it's a pile of crap and you're just throwing medium at it, fair enough, as is your right, said before. However, composition is key, like so key because even an abstract piece can feel jarring to look on yeah and not in a good way not like <clears throat> excuse me in an intentional way if you're not familiar with composition and and finding areas pockets of space that you flatten out to let the viewer's eye kind of cascade round you, you it's like a journey they don't know that that's how you've done it while you're doing it that's your right as the creator to dictate how the viewer's journey is going to be like when they're looking at your work and it's a privilege um but it also is a consideration so yes abstract work might not be your a forte or your gig cup of tea if you will however bear in mind the amount of decisions work blah 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 that goes into creating such a expressional piece I love it. I find it freeing. I find it exercising. And you know, my struggles on trying to translate that same passion and that same freeing element that I find in my sketchbooks, I've now started to plonk on canvas. Well, it's great, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it fabulous? I'm delighted with myself. Over another hump, guys. Over another hump. It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a journey, right? We are going to crack on with this now and hopefully in a week or so, this is probably how long it's gonna take, I'm gonna have, we are gonna have a finished canvas. What I usually do, I, th I do it to a point I think it's finished. I put it on the wall and I live with it and then I just titivate it every now and again. The amount of times I've gone down with like a tube of paint and a paintbrush in hand sort of painting the painting on the wall. My husband's freaking out thinking I'm ruining it. Oh, let go, let go, Sunny Jim. Come on, sweetheart. You need to, you need to let go and stop being so sentimental. Let me shine my light. Oh. Good morning. Um, Oh, get a cup of tea. As you can see, the painting has changed quite a lot. One thing that I've been um and ahhing about is adding mixed media. So the glitter for one, obviously. This will continue to evolve over a period of time. I'm unsure of it at the moment. All I'm going to do is I'm going to do that alongside another canvas. So I've got some smaller than these ones but still quite large canvases literally behind you put them under here uh, and work on them whilst i'm thinking about that one here here we are look so i have an empty sketchbook next to the canvas and then if thinking about a color or a texture then i will plonk it on there before I plonk on there. So what I'm thinking is I'll just take you through these ones. So you've got these two. These ones are really where the money's at, I think. In terms of the inspiration, the technique, these two. And you can obviously see some of my tree inspiration like these two in there. If one body of work had a love child with another body of work, this is what will what would come out, I think. I like it. I need more of this kind of thing. This very kind of colourful. I need it more up here and over there. I don't want to take over the whole space equally though. It still needs to be balanced. So I feel feeling some more. I've got love this orange coming through. I'm thinking about adding glitter. 
Now, in order to test this theory, I did do two things, and it did involve my sticker roonies. So these are some of the textures that I would be looking to day job. We've been caught out. You know, the, the cloud, I don't know whether you remember that. It was a, a happy accident, actually. It was a little experiment that I just adored. So, not that I would stick this to this, but I'm using it to see if it could take some glitter. We've also got this, which I'm yet to work on. I do have some grand plans for this bad boy, but um, it was intended to work on. So I might, might plonk that a bit there. And then I was thinking about this kind of texture on top. Uh, not the black, sorry, the, uh, what's it called? The, the, the snow or rain, however, it looks more like snow in here, but however you want to interpret it. Um, so I was thinking maybe, you know, maybe a bit of that. I think this kind of thing would certainly tie in the two, but then do I want to tie them in? So we have a lot to think about and that's what we're going to be doing today. So this is day three on this piece. Hmm. So we're going to ponder this. I will be kind of nipping in and out and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. didn't even tell you my con. Mm -hmm. I'm in um and about it because I don't know whether to use glitter. Mm -hmm. I need to clean up some areas like this one, but I'm waiting for, that's pretty dry. I'll try and get in there. What I might do is live with it for a while. Take one down, put one up. I don't want to seal it. So I don't want to put the varnish on it until I'm sure. This is always like the hardest part for me. I'm like, oh what do I do? I like at the beginning, you know, when you're just messing around. That's my favourite bit. I love glitter. Love it. I just think it makes everything better and fabulous. I don't know what to do. I think the thing is, I know I want it on there, so that's that. I've made one decision at least. But for me, it's like how, where, in what way, um, you know, I mean, I could blop them on or blop shapes on, you know, on the canvas, couldn't I? So that is causing me, well, not problems. It's just like, wish I could make a decision. But I don't do canvases enough. You know what I mean? I think every canvas comes or every piece comes with its own set of like annoyances. But equally, I don't do them enough to be able to quickly make decisions, you know, in a sketchbook, as I said before, it's kind of like bish bash bosh. Yeah, I'm just looking at it through the viewfinder. I'm not just sort of stood here, just, just looking. I really like it. I do like it, I do. It's just uh, a few things that I need to make a decision on. What I'm gonna do is put a drip in, and the reason is because there's a certain area that's not covering up. Okay, cool. I'm just pissing about now. Right. Don't really know what it is. Well, it's obviously trees or inspired by trees, but I can assure you that it will more than likely not end up like this. So let me move you back because you're right in there. So the idea for this one was to take the inspiration from some more like this one. And you've seen these before, so they're nothing new, but I wanted to try and realize I'm on a canvas. But I'm struggling with the background because I started it and I was like, yeah, that's really good. And then I really liked like these bottom bits where it's a bit sort of messy. I'll probably just put more color in there, I think more tone as opposed to having it as flat. <laughs> I think um, my intention with this was to try and do that kind of, you know, when you cut in you know, and I found that it's not translating as it does in ink on paper. Obviously it wouldn't because it's bloody canvas and acrylic, but I was hopeful. I decided to keep it rough because I really like this sort of texture. So I made a, like a base. 
underneath. I, I mean, I started doing swatching of different like colors to potentially go around the background. And then I started cutting this in and I left that because I thought that was quite interesting. So I've kind of adopted that same notion across the canvas. And then at the top, I blocked in a bit more just to give it some definition. I quite like that. Good morning, everyone. We haven't completed the canvas in that it's not 100% finished. However, I do feel that I'm at a point where I could potentially seal it with my Mod Podge. So I got this Mod Podge. So this is gloss, <clears throat> water-based, sealer and finish, glue sealer and finish. So I'm probably gonna do that today off camera because I don't have much space. So trying to keep it as flat as possible, seal it, it's, it will be a nightmare. So the only thing I'm pondering is the glitter, as you know, and I can always add that even after sealing. It probably would be better to seal it and then add the glitter because the glitter comes with its own sealant anyway. I have added some glitter to this one. And the reason I did that was because I wasn't 100% with this one. I wasn't really happy with the direction. I thought, well, if I'm not happy with it now, what's the issue with me just adding some glitter? And then I can see how it kind of reads on there or could potentially transfer some of those ideas to the big boy. We have had a lot of new subscribers for this channel and wow. Thank you so much for joining me on this crazy journey. Basically the journey is, if you haven't already established, is I am vlogging or basically documenting my attempt at becoming a self-sustaining artist or a full-time artist. That's the dream, that is the goal. And I vlog about it. You don't only know, I will be launching my website in May. It was July, but I realized the other night that my first upload was in fact May. Plus it's closer to us, you know? Next week, I'm not sure, it's weather dependent. If that gives you a bit of a, a, bit of a hint, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I'm told that the bell and the likey thing and comments all help. So if you find anything interesting or you wanna know anything, please don't feel like you can't comment. Please comment, I love it when I get comments. It's really lovely. It's um, I want to create that community and I appreciate you engaging with me every week. It's so weird doing this. I'm so terrible at, at doing this whole subscribe like bell thing. People, people just sort of, you know, streamline it. We have new subscribers. So welcome, welcome everyone. It's lovely to have you here. And I do appreciate all of you very much. And you're all a part of the same thing. You help me out a lot. A lot of the comments, messages that I get in and outside of YouTube, they really do help me to either make decisions by fellow artists and creatives or a new perspective on someone who's who's creative in a different in a different way. It's um yeah, it's like gold dust that. Subscribe, like, bell thing, Bob. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. I'll see you next week.